Hey guys, Desletter Magic here, and there's a hurricane blowing in and a date named Florence. It's Hurricane Jerry Thompson, and he is causing just as much destruction. So whenever something looks bad for a company, let's just start with a company, not even Wizards, just any typical company, they can either address it, they'll get a PR professional, sometimes it's even like seriously an outside like image management damage control firm that'll come in, write a perfect flawless statement that's the best they can possibly do, might change a couple opinions, and they try to spin it, and you know, you guys know, I mean you've seen it. Or they go full-blown turtle, do not comment on it, and just wait for it to blow over, wait for it to go away. So if it's big enough, they have to comment. If it's small enough, they'll just wait for it to blow over. It's some stupid gimmicky, and eh, maybe it wasn't even their fault, oh, it's becoming an internet joke. They'll just hide from it. I mean, that's, that's just what you do. You don't make it bigger and keep it in the news cycle by making a comment on it. But if it's so big and so, like deep cutting to the fundamental image of your company, you gotta do something. So in this case, with Jerry Thompson taking a giant shot at him, which by the way, if you didn't see my last video and also haven't heard about this, he's a pro player, very well respected, honestly. And um, he is just like, I am not going to the world tournament in protest because screw it, because the state of pro magic is so bad and it needs to be fixed. And I just want to draw attention to it. Now, did he have something better to do or is he having monetary issues with traveling there? And he pulled what we in the industry call a sprinkle and decided to throw somebody under the bus to make himself look better instead of just saying, hey, I can't go to this or I'm quitting this or whatever. Oh, it's a distinct possibility. I have zero evidence of it other than it seems odd. It seems like an odd thing to do. Not like I know him personally, but it seems a little counterproductive given his complaints about how much pros don't make. Sit out a giant tournament that only comes around once per year or whatever and forfeit any kind of prize money you might get seems very counterintuitive to me. But regardless, I mean, who cares? Like, it's two birds with one stone, even if that were true, and it's very likely not. I mean, it's, who cares? I'm just bringing that up as it's a possibility. You know, you gotta see both sides of this. You can't just side with one or the other. Like, oh, I hate wizards, so I'm automatically siding with Jerry. Everything coming out of Jerry's mouth is 100% accurate. But regardless of the setup, this is what it is. The situation is what it is. So, um, like I said, wizards decided to make a comment, but they didn't just... Oh, let's publish a thing, let's hide it on the WPN site, or let's hide it on the announcements page, but not Daily MTG, which is usually where they put stuff like this, and hey, he got banned for cheating announcements from like every GP ever, they hide those in the same location on their website. So you know how CNN have that guy who's so British, you almost think that it's somebody acting British, like he's such a cliche stereotype Brit that it's, it's astonishing, and whenever the Queen does something, they like dig him up and throw him in front of a camera? Well, Wizards of the Coast has one of them as well except he's quite a bit fatter and uh, i'm pretty sure he's one of the announcers for like all like pro play and stuff i mean i never watched the coverage but i think the couple clips i've seen i think he was in them so yeah let me just set this up for you here and, and just spell out where i'm going with this in case you're not putting two and two together jerry was like the pro tours are crap the pro scene is crap everything about it is crap it's such a joke i gotta protest it wizards needs to fix it and the coverage sucks and the announcing sucks and the announcers don't know what they're doing and can't even follow the game. So Wizards takes one of the announcers and makes him read their statement. Ooh. Hey, British guy, British guy. Jerry just said you sucked. Did you hear about it? Here, go read our statement. Oh, I would have quit on the spot. I would have been like, I am not reading this. Are you kidding me? That would be like somebody at Wizards telling Mark Rosewater to, like, get in front of the camera and make a statement about how much Wizards loves Desolator Magic and what a wonderful channel he runs. Like, right after I did the meme edits of Mark, which, by the way, those were not, like, ill intent at all. I just meant them to be funny. I wasn't, like, taking shots at him or making fun of him. I kind of like Mark. I mean, I think he's terrible for the company. His politics are ridiculous, and he's ruining Wizards of the Coast at a fundamental level. But, like, he's, you know, he's fun, and he's, like, he's a, a good front man for the company. Like, he's, he's funny, he tells it like it is, and he doesn't always just, you know, go with the company line. So a lot of good, a lot of bad, just wanted to add that little tangent there because um, a lot of people think, oh, you're, you're sitting there editing them to make them look like an idiot because you hate them. Uh, no. 
That's just how meme edits work, okay? If they could have put anybody in there, I would have edited a bunch of stupid sound effects and crap and, and all that. Like, it, I don't care who it is. So anyway, um, I don't know if you've seen the clip. You should definitely look it up. It's on Twitch. I mean, you'll find it. Just type in, like, Wizard's Response or a, a, a WOTC official statement on Jerry Thompson is the actual title of the video. So a uh, British announcer guy gets on in his little suit, this little, little clipboard or whatever. And instead of, hey, we've got a response, hey, here's the news story, I'm going to set this up like I'm talking to you, he literally just, like, disconnects himself from it. He goes, I have in my hand here a statement from Wizards of the Coast. I am going to read it out word for word. Like, that's how he opens. Like, this is not me talking, kind of implying if it was me talking, I'd have some words for Jerry. If he doesn't like my, you know, announcing, then, you know, piss off. I am reading so far between the lines, I don't even know where the lines are anymore, but I mean, come on, somebody insults you directly and be like, hey, you're terrible at your job. Um, yeah. He might as well have stepped out and said, here's a statement Wizards is making me read. I am going to read it verbatim. I mean, he literally almost said that word for word. So the statement's pretty, you know, boilerplate block cookie cutter nonsense. It's just, oh yeah, we heard uh, Jerry Thompson is not showing up because he's protesting. That sucks, but we still respect him. And freedom of speech and some of his criticisms are valid. You know, the whole, oh, we're going to give him some leeway and partially agree and blah, 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 so that they're not just like, he's full of crap. That's usually poorly received. You always got to open with almost like complimenting the person so that it doesn't look like you're just us versus them, rah, you know, let's turn this into a big battle. In other words, the PR department wrote this, but kind of goes without saying. But then they turn it around and they're like, what he was complaining about, we've already acknowledged and admitted and we already said we're working on it. Hey, remember when we hired pro player consultants? We did that because we know that the pro tour sucks. So their angle on it is, um, his, he's shown up late to this one. We acknowledge it, we addressed it, and we're already improving, so what's the point of being like, oh, look, they're taking steps in the right direction. Let's protest. This is terrible. This is my last resort. And honestly, what little point they have there logically is the only angle they could possibly take on this because everybody knows, especially after Jerry's statement, that the pro tour is garbage. The whole pro scene is ridiculous. A lot of the pros don't like it. They don't like the prizes, the money, the expense, the time, the way you qualify, the cutthroat nature, and all the cheating, which was Jerry's entire argument. They can't deny any of that. So the only angle is, um, it, it's like a form of, uh, what do they call that? Outdate the outrage. That's where you change one little circumstance and then say, oh no, his complaints are completely wrong. They're invalid because now they're outdated. See, here's additional information and this is what was wrong. So no, it undercuts everything he just said. So you should definitely just ignore it. But this isn't classical, like cliche, perfect outdate the outrage. It's not quite what they're doing. They're more like post dating the outrage. Or, I don't know, what would be the term for that? Basically, like I said, it's just, we're already working on it. Why is he complaining about it now? Like, we're already taking steps in the right direction. Is he mad that we're not doing it fast enough? That we can't just snap our fingers and fix it overnight? And then they run down the changes, just in case you forgot. They're like, we added two pro tours. We're making it easier for people to win prizes. It ups the total prize pool, which I do believe is correct, I think. But as if that addresses every single complaint he had. But I guess they're trying to outline, hey, we're fixing it, we're working on it, it's a process, whatever. And then they go on to outright say, like, our commentators, specifically these two by name, are really good at their job, they know what they're doing. That's funny, the fans and community seem to think otherwise. I don't know, I've watched about five minutes total of coverage and they seem to know what they're talking about. They're like, oh, this deck, that deck, he has this counter. Maybe if he pulls this, he'll do this. Oh, I think he made this decision because of this. Seemed okay to me, but maybe if I watched like 10 hours of it, then I might see some flaws or some mistakes or whatever. But like, who's perfect? I mean, who knows every deck, every strategy in all of modern, especially in like a three format uh, format or <laughs> whatever you would call it. If you got to cover standard modern and legacy at the same time, you better have every deck memorized and um, modern's changing pretty significantly. So like, that's a lot of research. And I don't think the commentators are getting paid enough to analyze it at like NFL levels. Like every play, every player, every background, plus the researchers behind the announcers on all these shows on ESPN and stuff. Yeah, they put in some effort because there's a lot of money on the line. I don't think that the announcers are getting paid enough at the Magic tournaments to find every new deck list, study it, and know what every deck does, every mechanic, every card. I mean, that's that's unreasonable. So, you know, but still at the end of the day... If the community and the people watching it say it's bad, then it's bad. I mean, you can have all the valid excuses in the world. You still have to do something about it. 
I mean, nobody's gonna accept, oh, well, the commentating can't be good, so, oh, well, I guess it'll just not be good. I'll keep watching anyway. Hell no. The customer wants what the customer wants, and the customer's always right, which is ridiculous. The customer's usually wrong, but in this case, whatever. I mean, if you're not gonna watch it and you have a valid reason, then you're not watching it for a valid reason, and whatever. Fix it. If it's unfixable, then it's unfixable. Bad situation. So they end with, hey, the big tournament's coming up, it's gonna be a culmination of everything, it's improving, you should watch it anyway, don't listen to Jerry, basically. A lot of this is my take, I'm adding my opinion to their statement, like I said, if you want their exact verbatim word-for-word -word statement, go watch the video, it's like a minute long. I'd link to it, but it's on Twitch, and I'm not even sure how to link to that. It's embedded in the Screen Rant article, I mean, if you Google it, it's the first result. So blah, 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 we're looking forward to 2019 and beyond, and we're improving, and it's not as bad as you think, and whatever. So it's honestly pretty damn hilarious that they made him go out there and read that, and um, th one of the names that they referred to might have actually been him. I actually don't know that guy's name. They're like, our two commentators by name know what they're doing. Well, it, it would be even funnier if it wasn't him, if he wasn't on the list, and then they're still making him read it. Oh, damn. I would do more research into who's who and who does what and who covers what. Maybe this isn't even the live coverage guy. Maybe he does the stuff in between or just interviews. I know I've seen him somewhere and you know what? I don't care because it's the pro scene and I just don't care about the pro scene. I'm not going to sit there and look into and research and learn about something that I have no interest in and actively dislike. So anyway, that's the word from Wizards. Um, the only other news on this is that uh, Jerry Thompson sat down with an interview with, of all people... LSV, which is of course short for Lumpy Space Vargas. He was a longtime pro player who became a voice actor for Adventure Time. And oh my god, you guys! He sat down for an interview with Jerry Thompson. And uh, it was really interesting. I mean, the, it, it's pretty much what you thought. Just, hey, can you reiterate everything you just said so that I can write an article about it and get a ton of clicks? So two huge takeaways from this interview. First... Uh, he asks, in their statement, which I'm sure Jerry heard at this point, Wizards mentioned that they were already working on some of the issues. In fact, that was the backbone of their response to what he said. Uh, some would say coverage has improved significantly. Is there any chance that they just need more time? So basically, they're already fixing things. If given enough time and you wouldn't be so impatient, would it get to an acceptable level is what he's getting at, I think. And his statement was, give us more time has been their go-to excuse for nearly a decade. So no, I don't believe he feels that they need more time. It's just like, we'll make MTGO not a glitchy, freezing, crashing piece of garbage that looks like it was written in the 90s. And if I'm not mistaken, I think it was. Maybe early 2000s. I don't remember. Everything with Wizards has been, give us more time, give us more time, give us more time. We just need more time. We'll improve in the future. Just give us more time. It's been 25 years. So no, he is not having it. He took their main excuse, which is we're already improving. We've admitted it. We've identified it. And we're working towards the thing. So just be more patient. And you're the one with the problem. He just took that, got out his axe, and cut that down at the base. So he even goes on to say, at some point, your time has run out and you need to provide something of substance, which seems to indicate that... No, their l recent changes and all the fans, maybe some portion of them, I should say, saying, yeah, coverage has improved. Not good enough, not even enough to be considered a step in the right direction. They've run out of time. They need to provide something of substance, not just a bunch of, oh, look, we added computer animations and nobody cares, where it's just a bunch of fluff. It's, it's nothing. It's insubstantial. And then he keeps twisting the knife because he's pissed, he is stressed out over this whole situation, he's not happy about what he, in his mind, feels like he had to do. So he says, Star City Game Tour events typically surpass Grand Prix in viewership, which if I'm not mistaken, Channel Fireball is the GP people. Star City Games pulled out because they said, oh, it's too difficult and expensive and doesn't make any money to hold GPs, and then they hold their own separate events that aren't GPs. Which makes no sense, except that he's saying that they usually get more viewership, so I guess the money is there. I, that doesn't even make sense to me logically, but who knows. Um, and he says, yeah, that's because they do a better job with coverage. Ho, ho, ho. That explains it. GPs should have every advantage over Star City Games. Oh, especially, God, Star City Games' reputation. I hope he mentions that in the next paragraph. I don't think he does. Uh, he says they can be advertised on the official Magic platforms. It's the only official Magic, or it's it's on the official Magic Twitch channel. It's for higher stakes, and that is true, higher higher um um the prize pools, and features known professional players. So Star City Games are like, 
I guess unofficial. It's not really the real term, but you know, they're not they're not the GPs. They're not advertised by wizards. Um like big, big, big celebrities aren't always at them, and yet they do better, they get more views, and that's in his opinion, and he's probably right, because they do a better job with coverage. So it all comes down to quality of coverage. So the announcers must be as bad as he's saying. I mean, like I said, I wouldn't know. It didn't seem like it in the couple minutes I watched, but it really must be. I've heard some stories, though, where people are like, you're covering this match where it's already in the bag and we already know? I want to go back to that match and watch the result of that one. Or you're leaving the most boring game up on screen uh, or you're, you know, you're time delaying this one? What the hell? I wanted to know what happened in real time. I already heard about this one or whatever. And then there's the technical issues, like just, oops, we left up a, an, an ad or a blank screen for 10 minutes or whatever. I think people were telling me that they did that. So maybe they, they don't just mean literally what the announcers are saying. They mean the whole package, the stream itself, the presentation is terrible. And from what I've heard from lots of different people, it is. It is a technical mess. I've worked in live video coverage for like concerts, plays, um, speeches, I've done, like, political events, I've done videography for that, editing, live coverage, live mixing. So I'm more than qualified to tell you they are doing it wrong and they hired a bunch of morons who have just no idea what they're doing. You need backups, you need everybody to be on the same page, you need the camera operators to have a working knowledge of how the game works, and you need an emergency backup go-to that isn't a static ad. Test your video and audio ahead of time and have backups. Have a pre-written segment that you go to live in case something goes wrong. Which is just like if there's a giant delay in an NFL game, like some player gets injured or something happens or the all the power gets cut because they accidentally blew up the substation. That happened during the Super Bowl, by the way. Everybody knows you go to the stats. You cover the game stats. Talk about the game stats until the problem goes away. Don't just leave up a blank screen that says, we'll be right back to this NFL game. Oh, don't just run ads for 10 minutes straight. If it gets bad enough, you go to the highlight reel of the other games. That's what you do. That is the backup plan in case there's a delay and you have nothing to say and nothing to show on screen because the game stopped. If these people were vaguely professional, they would know what they're doing. They'd stop making so many mixing errors and audio errors and just everything. They'd stop accidentally showing people's deck lists the day before they played or whatever the hell they did. So yeah, it's bad. It's really bad. So finally, he says to wrap it all up, coverage has improved but it's still light years behind its competitors. So obviously Star City Games and their coverage. The numbers don't lie. So seems to outline that, yeah, wizard stuff is unwatchable, which is ironic because they're trying to shove more and more eyeballs in front of it and hype it up like it's the greatest thing since the damn Super Bowl, when usually you fix it and make it not crap, then have people have their first impression of it be actually good. Not, let's get more people watching so that we can... I don't know, fund it better because more viewers equals more money in a vague sense and it needs to be bigger for us to make it not suck. Guess what? If somebody watches one Pro Tour or one GP and it's awful, they're not coming back for the next one. No matter how good you tell them it is, they will believe their own experience. So yeah, they're going about it all backwards. All this, let's bring in Hearthstone people, let's make a beta draft so the cards are worth, you know, five, ten grand that they're pulling. Oh my gosh. No, make it not suck at a basic level first. Okay, so the second takeaway from this interview is hilarious. So they asked him, um, you know, you really came down on the coverage. How did the people running the tournament, running the coverage, take it? So he says that he let them know uh, 45 minutes ahead of time. He said he messaged Scott Larrabee, whoever that is, and guess he runs stuff or something, um, just to give him a little heads up so they wouldn't have to just knee-jerk make a statement or something, you know, whatever. So honestly, yeah, Jerry's being pretty generous and polite about this instead of just dropping out on him for maximum damage. He doesn't just want to harm them and throw wizards under the bus. He wants to make a statement and make improvements. So he says their first order of business was removing me from the guest list and making it so I'm no longer allowed at the venue. So him saying I'm not going to show up, their instant reaction, the first thing they did was ban him from the premises wow dick move of the century that's like oh you don't want to show up fine you're banned that's like oh you're gonna fire me too bad i quit that is the most pathetic childish angry ridiculous response that i have ever heard i mean it's ridiculous and of course it wasn't meant to be made public but guess what it's an interview and jerry's gonna tell us what happened 
I mean, I imagine the message back was fine. Screw you. You're not welcome at the venue. You're banned from the premises. We never liked you anyway. You have cooties. So he says, yeah, they made it clear that I'm no longer allowed at the venue. So I'm guessing they didn't take it well. No one has contacted me from their end. So the only thing they did was either indirectly say he's banned or let him know that he's banned. And then that was it. Hasn't heard anything from him. And you know, wizards, their first thing is everybody hush, hush, nobody talk about this. And then they decided to make a statement later. So that makes sense. Either that or they took it so personally, they're so pissed at them, they know that no response would be vaguely polite, so they're just keeping their mouths shut. Hey, it's your own damn fault. The coverage sucks. So, you know, point the finger at yourself. Don't point it at this guy. It's not Jerry's fault. You guys suck at covering stuff live, okay? What, are you going to ban me from the venue too? Screw you. I wasn't showing up anyway. I literally don't even know where it is. Oh, anybody disagrees with us? Off with their head. Oh, wait, we can't do that. Banned from the venue. Hey, Scott Larrabee. Fuck you, personally. You suck. I'm being constructive in helping the situation. Scott, you really should be fired. You are so bad at your job, it's comical. Okay, they need to replace you with somebody who knows what they're doing because you've proven that you can't improve quick enough, okay? Just get the hell out of here and let somebody who's better at their job do your job for you. Hey, DM me on Twitter if you have a response to that, you asshole. I really hope he does. You'll be the first to know. I'm very sure he watches my channel. He's my number one fan. I don't know if this is a particularly serious question, but LSV also asked him if he'd be willing to act as a consultant if it were offered, like if he was offered a position on the uh, pro advisory board, whatever the hell they're calling it. Um, that would never happen. When Wizards is mad at somebody, they stay mad, okay? He ain't going on no board after a stunt like this. I am calling it right now. But of course, Jerry's answer was yes. You know, his whole point to this was not, I'm abandoning it. I'm jumping ship. Good luck, you guys. Bye. This is the Titanic and it's sinking. No, he's reiterated this before. And again, now he wants to fix it. He wants it to become better. Not just burn it all down. I'm going to go play Pokemon. Yes, that was a specific reference to another YouTuber. I love the closing statement about like, you know, what, what can the average person do? And he says, um... Be kind to each other. Let's make everyone's experience with the magic community, big or small, as positive as it can possibly be. I'm not going to do that, Jerry. Some people are responsible for this and nothing is changing. Some members of the community are toxic. We need to call out the cheaters, the assholes, half of the staff at Wizards for the crap they pull on social media, people who design broken cards, people who make the wrong ban announcements. We don't need to all get along and hold hands and be positive. There's nothing positive about the last year and a half of Standard, okay? It is 100% negative. The game has been virtually unplayable and they're losing customers. This is serious. If they continue down this path and nobody calls them out on it everybody just sugarcoats everything that is nice and keeps their mouth shut about all the problems with wizards nothing gets fixed and the game dies that's why my channel exists and that's why my content is as direct and to the point and not sugarcoated as it can possibly be so for everybody constantly telling me you're too negative you take a negative take on everything that wizards does wrong constantly I'm not too negative. The company and the game are too garbage, okay? I've said it before and I'll say it again. When they do something wrong, I make a video about that. When they do something right, I make a video about that. There's no bias here. I just report what reality is. If they want me to stop being so negative, stop screwing up so damn often. Like, if my channel was about Venezuela, I have nothing nice to say about Venezuela. You know why? Because there's nothing nice about Venezuela. Like, if I made a bunch of videos about New Zealand and people are like, wow, you're really stuck up to New Zealand. Why are these videos so flowery and positive? Because New Zealand's freaking awesome, okay? That's why. Shout out to all my hobbits out in Middle Earth watching this channel. So yeah, we need more MTG Lion and Perp and me and Jeremy and Jerry. We need more of us in the community who will not be quiet about this. You see something, you say something, okay? Something's wrong, you bring it to people's attention so that it's exposed to the light and something gets done about it. The squeaky wheel gets the grease. I guess in that analogy, the person pointing at the squeaky wheel forces that wheel to get greased. So that's about all I gotta say about this. Um, honestly, my opinion at the end of the day, if I were to just step back and be like, what is the grand response to all of this? Nobody gives a crap about pro magic. You can't force people to be interested in it or watch it. Even if the coverage was perfect, people just don't care. They care about going to FNM, hanging out with some friends and playing magic. All they want is standard to be playable and fun. That's it. 
who cares about the pro level? Stop obsessing over the pro level and putting so much money and time and interest and effort into it when one, you're getting nowhere clearly and you're getting nowhere fast and two, way too fast of decks and way too control spammy bullshit has taken over standard and the players, the actual customers hate it. I don't care about the Pro Tour, I don't care about the health of the Pro Tour, I don't care about the results of the Pro Tour, or the GPs, or anything else. I care about how fun it is to play Magic, and if your customers are coming back week after week to play FNM. You should be interested in that too, Wizards. That should be the top priority, because between 99.5 and 99.8% of your players will never attend a GP, ever, in their entire life. A very similar percentage will never watch the coverage of it either. I've run a giant YouTube channel about Magic the Gathering and I can name maybe three pros by name, maybe. We just don't care. The pro scene is irrelevant, okay? Work on making your game not crap for the average player. And if you were to take away anything from this situation, I think it's that. So take away whatever you want from this entire situation, but at the end of the day, I think it's all rendered completely moot by the fact that they're way off base in even caring about this at all. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next absolute catastrophe in the PR world for Wizards. Probably tomorrow.